the narrative of Brian Malamongo is If you told me that this would be my life, like four, four years ago, I honestly would just be like, what would you mean? I'd be, I, I, I couldn't fathom that you, I'd be making clothes, do you know what I'm saying? But I'm here and I'm doing that. So it makes me feel like, oh my God, like what, what, what am I gonna be doing in the next four years? <laughs> and, and how are the people around me gonna change? Like how is the world gonna change? Like, yeah. I'm my only child, so I spent a lot of my childhood with my imagination, as well as my cousins and my friends. But I think I had a very observational um, standpoint on the world. I used to go to art club, like I loved art when I was growing up, um, inside and outside of school. Like, I used to watch programs like Art Attack or just anything that was about like, you can turn your milk carton into like a spaceship. Like, ah, oh, like even now I'm kind of a little bit excited about that notion. <laughs> I mean, I, as a kid, you always want to be like loads of things. I think I've always wanted to do performative things, but then I wanted to be like a wine connoisseur <laughs> at like the age of 11. I just kept on maybe without knowing of subconsciously, just push myself to find how I can express what things I need to say. I think now in my older years, I understand that I'm a humanitarian as well as that kind of artistic soul and how I kind of get into realms of um, being humanitarian is through that. Like, I, I, I love people, I love to work with people and everything I do um, is about people and about stories and journey. In a big city, that has a lot of corporate elements too. And in a sense, for your artistry, your creativity to be your lifestyle as well as your livelihood, you have to be creative in how you make that happen. And I think that also evokes a sense of community because you have to just work in a different way. You can't, you, you can do it by yourself, but it's also always so much helpful um, and nice to, to work with other people and collaborate with other people. I think it's the solo community which makes the, the bigger community. <laughs> Themes and especially politics of progression and how that looks and how that's evolving it is really important to me. And then I've always, I think, had like, such an eco-conscious, like, vein um, inside me. Um, one, if it's a, a tool to utilise my creativity, as it's talking about the milk carton, like I only have a milk carton, but yeah, it actually has a, it doesn't go into landfills or, and it gets to be something else. And this gets a bit more holistic, but I think, and this, and I don't know if maybe I have saviour complex, but um, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I just think it's just something that's always just gonna circle my heart because I think maybe, okay, woo, it's getting deep. But as, <laughs> um, as a man that is of um, an ethnic minority who also um, identifies as non-heterosexual, you can grow up feeling like you're on the suburb of society or, you know, you're not included. Quote unquote, trash. And I think if we come down to it, and my work, and my art, there'll be specific key um, political or issues. But I think I really want to turn <laughs> trash into to, to treasure. And whether that's showing the world that this is something that should be looked at, or whether it's just connecting with that person and just saying, hey, I don't, don't worry about 15 other million people in the world. I hear you and I'm with you on that, that road and that journey is what gets me going. <laughs> oh no, don't cry. <laughs> But thank you for getting me, helping me get to a realization.